Nowadays, it's not enough to create an app with some outstanding features and functionalities. Our users want to have an experience while using the app. Therefore, it becomes necessary to include in our apps a profile page and a settings page. As a developer, you will often need to create these types of pages in your apps. An edit profile page to allow the users to change their personal information and a settings page to customize their experience while using the app. Welcome guys to my channel. In this short series of two videos, you will learn to create this edit profile page and this settings page. Today we will implement this one, the edit profile page. To be among the first to know when the second part of the series will be ready, please subscribe and don't forget to click on the notification bell. And also, this helps grow the channel. Before jumping into the code, let's try to identify the structure of the page and also the main widgets that we will use to recreate this design. The page starts with an app bar with two icons, then a text widget. For this profile picture, we will use the stack widget. Inside the stack, we will have a first container with an image in the background and a second container with an icon. The profile picture is followed by a group of text fields with labels and head text. At the very bottom of the page, we have an outline button to cancel and a raised button to save the changes. That's pretty much it for this design. Now you have a good idea of the main widget that we will use to build our edit profile page. So without any further ado, let's start coding. I already went ahead and created a stateful widget for our edit profile page. Now we'll start by creating the scaffold. Inside this scaffold, we'll create an app bar. Let's add the back button just for the sake of this design. Normally, Flutter would add this back button by default for us. For this, we will use the leading property of the app bar and pass it an icon button. Let's give the app bar the same color as the background of the page. Team of context dot scaffold background color. In the design, the app bar does not have a lot of elevation. For this reason, let's set the elevation property to 1. For this icon, we will use the action property of the app bar. It takes a list of widgets. We will use again an icon button widget, but this time with the settings icon. I think that's all for the app bar. Now, let's create the body of the page. We'll start with the container, and inside the container, we'll add a list view to allow users to scroll on smaller screens. The first widget in the list view will be a text for the edit profile. Let's format it using the text style widget. The text is too close to the app bar. Let's give it some paddings. We will use the constructor edge and set that only to be able to specify exactly where we want to add the paddings. For the profile image, as planned, we will use the stack widget. Inside the stack, we will first add a container with a width of 130 and a height of 130. Let's add a decoration. It takes a decoration box. Let's use the image property of the decoration box, which takes a decoration image. We will use a network image. Let's use the box fit cover to make the image cover the whole container. Now, we need to change the shape of the container into a circle using the shape property of the decoration box and set it to box shape circle. Let's center our stack using the center widget. Let's use the size box widget to create some spaces between the text and the profile picture. For the border of the container, let's go back to the decoration box. Border, border all, a width of 4. And for the color, let's make it the same color as the background of the app. Team of context dot scaffold background color. We need to give the container some shadows. For this, let's use the box shadow property, which takes a list of box shadows. For the edit button, we will use the position widget to place it at the bottom right of the first container. At first, I thought of using an icon button, but the icon button doesn't have a border. So we will use again our multipurpose widget, the container.
let's give it a height of 40 and a width of 40. Let's give the position widget a bottom of 0 and a right of 0 to place the container at the bottom right corner. As we did before, we'll give the container a box shape that circle and also the same border as the first container. Now, let's create the user information section, which is a bunch of text field widgets. We will start with the first one, the full name. For that, we will use the text field widget, and to format the text field, we will use its decoration property, which takes an input decoration. Let's add the label text, then the hint text, which takes also a string, and let's style it using the end style property. To make the text label stay at the top of the text field, let's use the floating label behavior property and set it to always. While we are at it, let's allow the user to deselect the text field. For this, we will warp the whole list view with a gesture detector and on tap, we'll set the focus scope of context to unfocus. Now we can deselect the text field. To create some spaces between the profile picture and the text field section, let's add a size box. Also, we'll use the content padding property of the input decoration to adjust the padding between the label text and the hint text. Now we are done with the first level. To create the other ones, we could simply copy and paste our text field many times. But I think a better approach is to extract it in a method. Let's do that. Now we can pass in the label text and the placeholder as arguments of this new method. Now we need to refactor the code. The text fields are too close to one another. To solve this, let's add some paddings. We will use the edge insets that only constructor, then set the bottom property to 35. For the password text field, we have two problems. The first one is that the text is not obscured when we start typing the password. And the second is, we don't have the icon at the end. Let's fix that right now. To solve this, we will use the obscure property of the text field class. Let's add a boolean argument is password text field, then pass it to obscure text. Now we need to add the icon at the end of the password text field. For this, let's use the suffix icon property of the input decoration. It takes a widget, so we'll pass it an icon button. To make the icon appear only for the password text field, we will again use the isPasswordTextField argument using the ternary operator. When it is true, we will show the icon button, otherwise nothing. One thing that is left to do now is to show the password when the user taps on the icon. For this, we have to create a state variable. We will call it show password, and by default, it will be false. Now let's go back to our icon button. When the user presses the icon button, we will set state and show password will receive not show password. That means if it was true, it will become false, and if it was false, it will become true. Now we need to change the obscure text to be able to show the password. To finish this screen, let's add the two buttons at the bottom of the page. For this, we will use a row 
and inside it, we will first add an outline button. And as a child for this outline button, a text widget. Let's give it some styling. Let's quickly add a size box for some spacings. Let's give it some paddings, this time with edge insets, symmetric horizontal. 50, which means 50 to the left, 50 to the right. Then we'll change the shape to a rounded rectangle border with a border radius circular. It's practically the same thing for the other button. The only difference is that we use a raised button instead of an outline button. And the color is green. We will stop here for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for the next video.